The World Expo is making a bold return to Japan, and this time, it's rewriting the rules of architecture. They've constructed a colossal wooden ring, so vast it could fit eight football fields across, and not a single nail was used. This isn't just engineering, it's a masterpiece of sustainable design. But how did they pull off this mind-blowing feat? What's the purpose behind this epic structure? And what can the world learn from Japan's iconic One Ring to Rule Them All? Let's uncover the secrets behind one of the most jaw-dropping wooden structures ever built. So what exactly is the World Expo? Established in 1851 with the Great Exhibition in London, the Expo was envisioned as a grand showcase for the world's most groundbreaking ideas, inventions, and cultural achievements. Held every five years, the World Expo, also known as the Universal Exposition, is like the Olympics of innovation, architecture, and diplomacy. It's where cutting-edge tech meets a global show-and-tell, basically a futuristic playground for nerds, dreamers, and billionaires trying to reinvent the way we live. It's where electricity, the x-ray machine, television, touchscreens, and even ice cream cones were introduced to the public for the very first time. When you think of the Eiffel Tower or the Seattle Space Needle, you probably don't picture a trade show. But guess what? Both of these global landmarks were born from the same origin, the World Expo. Back in 1893, when the US introduced the world to electric lighting, they didn't just hand out a few bulbs and call it innovation. Nope. They built the White City, a glowing, man-made wonderland powered entirely by electricity. We're talking canals, neoclassical architecture, and a giant Ferris wheel that towered over everything. This wasn't just a showcase. It was a blueprint for the modern city, and it reshaped Chicago's future forever. Fast forward to 1970. The Expo arrives in Osaka, and Japan responds with its jaw-dropping flex, Expo 70. Their mission? Shock the world. Because when the Expo comes to town, you go big, or you go invisible. They unveiled the Festival Plaza, a futuristic canopy held up by one of the largest space frame structures ever built, spanning 100 meters wide. And as if that wasn't bold enough, they erected the Tower of the Sun, a surreal towering sculpture that looks like it crash-landed from a mythological sci-fi universe. I mean, just look at this thing. Even in the 21st century, Expos still pull no punches. Expo 2010 in Shanghai shattered records with over 73 million visitors. To handle the crowd, China didn't just expand a venue. They built an entire city district, transforming five square kilometers into parks, pavilions, and next-gen infrastructure. And their showstopper? The China Pavilion, a massive red inverted pyramid the size of a football stadium. So here we are, 2025, an era of artificial intelligence, flying cars, and privatized space travel. What will this next chapter look like? Well, it starts with a giant wooden ring in Osaka, so elegantly simple, it takes your breath away. Spanning a jaw-dropping two kilometers, when the Tech Expo returned to Osaka, they didn't just build a pavilion, they built this. This is the Grand Ring, a colossal Guinness World Record breaking structure that wraps around the entire expo like a wooden halo. Constructed almost entirely from timber, without a single nail in sight, this architectural wonder is the largest wooden architectural structure on Earth, a feat that cost an estimated 34.4 billion yen, or about 240 million US dollars. But don't mistake it for just a walkway. It's a skyway, a statement, and a symbol, wrapped around Yumashima Island like a protective embrace. Designed by visionary architect Su Fujimoto, the Grand Ring was imagined as a circle of unity. Bold, ambitious, unapologetically Japanese. With an inner diameter of 615 meters, outer diameter of 675 meters, and rising to a height of 20 meters. This timber titan covers over 61,000 square meters, 
roughly the size of eight football fields laid side by side. As Fujimoto himself put it, I wanted to create a symbolic moment so that all people, when they look up, they see one sky. But here's the kicker. This isn't just a flex of scale. It's a fusion of tradition and tech. Drawing inspiration from ancient temple carpentry and reinforcing it with 21st century engineering, this ring is earthquake resistant, aesthetic, and deeply cultural. They use timber from Fukushima, joined using Nuki joinery, a centuries-old method where wooden beams interlock like high-precision puzzle pieces. Think of it like advanced wooden Lego, only designed to survive earthquakes. This same technique has kept sacred temples like Isa Jingu and Horyuji standing for over a thousand years. But this wasn't some ancient throwback. To scale it to expo size, engineers turned to glue lamb, glue laminated timber. It's the modern remix of old school carpentry, stronger, more flexible, and sustainably sourced, straight out of Fukushima Prefecture. And that skywalk? It's more than a bridge. It offers 360 degree views of the expo, the city skyline, and Osaka Bay while the rooftop above blooms like a floating garden with native trees, shrubs, and grasses. At its core, the Grand Ring is a living metaphor for the Expo's theme, designing future society for our lives. A seamless wooden canopy uniting 161 countries, built without nails, but with vision. So what exactly is a glue lamp? Short for glued laminated timber, Glue lamb is not your average plank of wood. It's a high-performance, engineered timber product, crafted by bonding layers of lumber together with ultra-durable, moisture-resistant adhesives. The result? Stronger, straighter, more stable than solid wood. It's the go-to material when you're building megastructures, like the Grand Ring. This layered design gives glue lamb the muscle to span huge distances without bending, breaking, or bowing. Now, traditionally, Japanese Nuki joinery was enough to make buildings quake-resistant. The secret? Wood flexes with seismic waves, not against them. But for something as enormous as the Grand Ring, architects needed a little extra muscle. So yes, modern reinforcements, like bolts and steel connectors, were discreetly added to meet today's seismic codes. But let's be clear, at its core, this structure is still a hand-cut, wood-on-wood -wood masterpiece rooted in centuries of tradition. To build it, Japan used over 27,000 cubic meters of timber. That's enough to fill more than 10 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Or put another way, that's the equivalent volume of 10,000 African elephants, or enough wood to construct a thousand average-sized homes. And if you really want to blow your mind, laid out in standard 2x4s, that timber could stretch from Osaka all the way to Los Angeles. About 70% of this wood came from Japan, mainly cedar and cypress, prized for their strength and lightness. The rest? Scots pine, flown in to hit those demanding structural specs. But this wasn't just about heritage or aesthetics. Fujimoto's use of wood was deeply strategic. Timber doesn't just build, it stores carbon, making it one of the most eco-friendly materials on the planet. And glue lamp? It allows for long spans, precise factory fabrication, and a light environmental footprint. The perfect match for a future-facing expo with sustainability at its core. This wasn't just about aesthetics or tradition. This was precision-built progress. By using pre-engineered timber, the Grand Ring project achieved few errors, faster assembly, and rock-solid joints, all while keeping material waste to a minimum. And the choice of Fukushima-sourced wood? Not just symbolism, it was a strategic economic reboot. From tree to timber, the entire process, felling, milling, laminating, was done right in the region. That meant local jobs, revived industries, and full quality control. A closed-loop supply chain that powered both the structure and the community. To put it simply, the Grand Ring is engineered sustainability. Carbon storage, rapid construction, and regional recovery, all rolled into one circular marvel. 
But of course, every masterpiece has its critics. Only 12.5% of the Grand Ring is slated for reuse after the Expo, a far cry from the original 25% goal. This sparked a heated debate. Is this sustainable showmanship or just disposable grandeur posing as green architecture? Regardless, construction marched forward, starting in June 2023. Some beams were so massive, over 400 millimeters thick, that they had to be pre-assembled off-site, hoisted by crawler cranes, and locked into place like a giant wooden game of Jenga on steroids. The ring was divided into three zones. Northeast, handled by Obayashi, Southeast, handled by Shimizu JV, and West, completed by Takanaka. And then came the twist. Against all odds, the entire two-kilometer ring was completed a full month ahead of schedule in August 2024. That's not luck. That's military-grade logistics, world-class coordination, and some serious architectural choreography. By February 2025, construction wrapped up, and on March 4th, the crowning moment arrived. Guinness World Records officially recognized the Grand Ring as the largest wooden architectural structure on Earth. And beyond stats and scaffolding, this structure speaks a deeper language. It connects Japan's past to its future, its temples to its tech. It transforms a global expo into something more than a showcase. It becomes a cultural pilgrimage where everyone walks beneath the same wooden sky, one ring to rule them all. Is the Grand Ring a timeless icon of sustainable innovation or just an architectural flex that won't weather the test of time? Let us know in the comments. Is Japan's wooden wonder a bold vision of future architecture or simply an expo spectacle wrapped in tradition? If you're all about mega builds, cultural engineering, and mind-blowing designs, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We've got even more jaw-dropping deep dives headed your way. And if you haven't already, check down our breakdown of the world's most insane dam. It's ready and waiting for you right here on screen. Stay bold, stay curious, and we'll see you in the next mega adventure.